real name is William Brian Bates, but I prefer Badger. And I was called Badger after Wind in the Willows, and yeah, and I got it from Volcano. When I was supposed to go to mission school, I used to go there now and again, and, and I liked going hunting and fishing better than the school, so, so they just called me Badger. Well, this piece here, this line up here, I just call it uh, Emu Sky. Is uh, why I call it Emu Sky. There's an Emu here, and if you're looking uh, at the right part of the sky in the winter, you'll see an Emu in the sky, and the Milky Way changes its head go down like that. And when that Milky Way changes its head down, that means the Emu is laying eggs. So I put an Emu here, Emu egg here, and then that Emu there. He walked along up here, went out a feet of berries from the bush there where he stopped and walked around like that. And he's walking back. Also, it's focused on early in the morning where you got the moon up and the big dippers in this area. And it's sort of focused on early morning because of the morning star and it's lighting these things up because the sun's coming up behind this hill. But also the moon here is lighting the stars up this way. So I just, just wanted to do that one to, so people can always look at the line of print and see the emu in the sky and relate to the line of print. My practice is hardest, I don't know, it was funny like I was just, like I was born in Wilcannia, reared up in Wilcannia and just lived in a tin hut on the riverbank, never lived in a mission, but always sat down and watched my old grandmother, she learned me to carve emu eggs when I was eight year old. And as I was growing up, I was watching my old uncle and nothing carve boomerangs and stuff like that, and I just went from there. I didn't even know what the word uh, sculpture was until about well, four years ago or something, when people, I used to say I was just a wood carver and just carved stone, but it's a bit strange to be called a sculptor when you just come from being a boomerang maker, but yeah. We had one sister and five boys, and I was the second eldest boy. And because my dad was a white man and he fought in the Second World War, but reared up around Will Canyon, uh, White Clifford, my people, and he got with my mum, and I came along, but he couldn't marry mum because she was black and he was white. and. It was sort of great in a way because being like having a white dad, black mum, I had a chance to get around because my grandmother always outsmarted the welfare because I was a target for the welfare for stolen generations but she always outsmarted them and took me from Wilcannia up towards Burke where I met some of the Gimilderoy people and that and Gimba people then went across the lake of Jellico that's towards uh, Kondo, and met up with Mob and Eva people, Wiradjuri people, and then back to Wilcannia, and we sort of travelled in a triangle, but while I was being taken around, uh, it was good I was learning, learning and watching other people do stuff, plus my grandmother was teaching me about our Barkindji culture and Barkindji Gurna culture, and sometimes it was hard, we didn't have much to eat, but I think if I had to live my childhood over again, I'd say I want to be like I was. Yeah, well, this print here, I call it uh, Mission Mob, Ben Mob, Bull Canyon 1950s. And uh, I didn't live in the mission, so this is the mission, this is the mission school. And I lived on the riverbank in two little tin huts here. This is the river go around like that. And you can see the fish, the two rainbow serpents. This is a billabong where we learned to go and fish, catch yabbies, get duck eggs and everything. 
and this is a white sand eel. It's a burial ground, but we were allowed to go and play around, but after dark, before dark, we had to get out of, away from here. And all the town of Wolcania Town is on up there. I didn't put the town in or the bridge because I wasn't allowed to cross the bridge because of my dad and I had real fair skin. And Granny used to think if I went across the bridge, the welfare would get me and take me away. And a lot of the kids that was taken from Wool Canyon around, they was taken down this road towards Sydney and they was taken to Sydney on this road. This is the Sydney road. And that's why I just left the white marks and really black in the middle because it's sort of to us it's the road where people took our family away and yeah. Yeah, I, I think it had a really big impact on me because, uh, like, we had to sit down, we had to go to the rubbish tips and get all our little bits of rusted stuff and we had to make our own toys because we didn't have any money for toys, but there was always hand-me-downs and stuff and we was learning to fix it up and, and just picking up bits of wood and, and start to make our own toys, you know, and using a stone as a motor car or a horse and cart. We'd sit down and we'd... Uh, get the black river mud from Wilcannia, like at Wilcannia you got red ground and black ground on the floodplains, and we'd get the black clay mud and we'd make horses and stuff, and now and again if we could afford it, we was allowed to go to see the pictures and we'd watch the cowboys and Indians, and we'd sit down and make these horses about so high and put little men in that on them, you know. And so I think just from having that childhood, sort of with nothing and you had to try and make something out of nothing, I think that's what got me today. If I think if I was spoiled and my family had a lot of money, I don't think I'd be where I am today. I don't think I could do it. I like carving because that's what my grandmother learned me to do. I'm 62 today. And also by doing these carvings and putting the designs and the bones of the structure of fish, uh, it's, I'm sort of telling my grandmother, yes, I'm going to carry on what you learned me. Yeah, well, that, with that, it sort of goes back to when we sit on the riverbank. My grandmother would go around, she spoke three or four different languages. But when she'd go around, she'd be all this, they'd be talking to some other old people, you know, they'd be all this drawing things on the ground and then telling me, you know, this is what you do, this is how we make our boomerang, this is how we make our throwing, you know, our stone axe and stuff like that. And then, uh, when I sort of growing up and then grew up and became a National Parks officer, I spent a lot of time like around Mutawindji National Parks and just looking at the engravings on the rock and the stencils and stuff like that and then sort of explain it to people because that's what grandmother told me about and yeah. I respect, you know, the people, the old people that do the dots from the top end and I try and tell my mob you know, don't do too many dots because really dots belong to them other old people, not our old people, you know, and we should just do what we was learned to do and stuff like that. And I think if you, I don't know if you, I don't know, I don't like calling myself artist, but if you want to be an artist and, and, and do something, you shouldn't muck with other people's stuff what they do. You should do your own or don't do it at all, I reckon. Just back in, say, 90, 91, about that time, there was another Aboriginal fellow, his name was Bill Hudson, he's a good mate of mine, he passed on. He was a liner print maker from Moree, and then my partner, Sir, and one of our friends, Karen Donaldson from Wilcannia, they always wanted me to do liner prints, but I was sort of wasn't interested in them until this fellow, this Bill Hudson, came along, like, and he was like a brother to me. He, uh, so down he gave me a piece of lino, you know, just about a foot square right around, and I carved it. And uh, but it was sort of, it was a bit foreign to me because carving emu egg, you get the knife and you pull it towards you, but carving lino, I had to push away. And what made it worse, it was in the winter time, and the lino tool kept slipping, and so I was like a little kid going back to school and trying to learn to read and write. But it started to slip away and after a lot of care, and I mastered how to do it. And then, I think it was 91, we had a couple of exhibitions 
and just before Bill had an exhibition, and just before he had his, his exhibition, he passed on, and he was a great mate, but his wife came up and said, take the exhibition, you know, he's still on it, so he came to Sydney, and from that exhibition, I got into the, at the Tin Shed, I got into the National Gallery in Canberra, but yeah, it was Bill Hudson what inspired me, and it was his exhibition what got me, I think, to where I am today, and I really appreciate that, you know, and for what he done for me. He done a real lot for me and my people, and yeah. Printer, I call it Iron Pole Ben, Wilcannia. It's focused on Wilcannia. The Wilcannia mission would have been around in this area here. The Darling River here, we've got two rainbow serpents coming up and they're blowing a rainbow out like that. We've got the emu in the sky. We've got the Big Dipper here. We've got the Seven Sisters here. And fishing that swimming, I was reared up about there. When you go from Wilcannia, Towards Broken Hill, there's a lake, a, a lake what they call Lake White Chuga, and that's what the white people call it, but we call it Lake uh, Baichuga, and Baichuga means the moon, and it's the moon lake. And uh, why it's just got dead fish in the lake is because we had we just getting out of a drought for over ten years, and our people are you know draining the Darling River and other rivers for doing crops and everything and it's, and it's killing everything so what I'm trying to do in this one is say look after the environment don't get too greedy because this is what happens with your fish and your yabbies and uh, the freshwater mussel they die and then not only the fish that die but the animals die too so why I like always in my work I'll always put the outline of the kangaroo because that's how my dad seen it because he was a white man. I put the bone structures because we eat the animal and also we know the bone structures in the animal. And that's the one thing what Granny always said, when you kill something, have a good look at it and respect what you eat. So that's why, to me, this kangaroo would have had my family or the goanna so I put it back in my artwork to tell that animal that I respected because it fed me. My family stopped us from starving and I'm bringing it back to life by doing this artwork. Also, if I got to cut a tree to make a sculpture, you know, I'll go and get a piece of dead tree. And what I'm up to now, I always go and get the off cuts off the river red gum because they got one big flat cut and then a nice round back and I carved the dead trees or dead wood so when I carve the dead wood I'm bringing it back to life because it might have been laying there for 50, 60 years but with my carving I bring it back to life for someone to enjoy. In my work I try and put across and if people look at it is we must look after the environment. If we don't we're going to be finished and we'll have nothing and all we see is just the stars in the sky and probably if we keep going we probably won't even see them anymore. We'll just pollute the world too much and everything will be finished. I think the message would be when they look at my work uh, is to be proud of who you are. I hope my work inspire a lot of people but also I hope my work, it, it will stop a lot of people from hating each other because, like, I had a rough life too, but, you know, we've got to learn to all live with one another, whether you're black, white or what colour you are. And I just hope that we could all live together happily in Australia and make things work and just show people how beautiful our country is, our artwork. And I just hope it inspires people and make them forget about a lot of their hate and just go from there. I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in Gulawara, I believe in the Aboriginal law, I believe in the Whitefellas law, and I think I'm one of the lucky ones from, just from my upbringing and having a white dad and a black mum.
because I got two cultures and and I respect both of them and I'm proud of both of them and I'm proud of who I am.